Today I'm going to show you how you can run Stable Diffusion on your own Windows PC right at home so you can generate an unlimited number of really awesome Stable Diffusion images just like these. Let's jump right into it. As always, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech. Today I'm going to show you this really cool system that you can set up called Automatic 1111. You can run this on pretty much any consumer grade Windows 11 or 10 PC that has an NVIDIA dedicated GPU. Now you can't run this if you have a discrete GPU built into the CPU, and you also can't run this easily if you have an AMD GPU. So with that out of the way, if you've got those minimum requirements, let's jump right in and show you how to get this going. Now first, why would you wanna do this? Well, it's really simple. If you checked out my other video, I showed you how to train your own Stable Diffusion AI model that you can use to create images with your own likeness like those seen right here. Now in order to do this, you need a place to run that model and actually process the Stable Diffusion images. In this case, we're gonna use our home Windows PC. I've got a fairly powerful PC with an AMD CPU and an NVIDIA RTX 3090 GPU. So it's got plenty of VRAM in order to process these massive files. So the first step we're gonna take here to get this going is you're gonna need to install Python. Python is the scripting language used for TensorFlow, and that's what's used to actually run a lot of the back end of these models. So if you're running Windows, you can go to the Python website, link down below, click on Downloads Windows, and you can grab the latest version right here. I should take just a second to download, and when that's done, you're gonna go ahead and fire this up, and you're just gonna step through the installation. Now I've already got this installed, so it's set up on here. There's nothing additional for me to do, but you'll just go through the default options there is one thing that you actually need to change by default in the options the add python to environment variables is not checked make sure that's checked otherwise this isn't going to work it might also depending on the version you're downloading it might also say add python to path so make sure that is checked and go ahead and hit install to get that going the second thing we need to do is install git for windows if you're not familiar with this git allows you to interact with code repositories on GitHub. In that case, that's where we're gonna download Automatic 11.11. So you're gonna go to this URL down below, click on download the 64-bit installer for Windows. Go through the setup, and once that's done, and this is honestly probably the most difficult step, but it's not that hard, we're gonna fire up the command prompt. So if you've never done this before, you're gonna press the Windows key and type CMD. You can also, Go down to the search bar at the bottom and type CMD, depending on the version of Windows that you're running, and that's gonna pop open a command prompt. That should look something like this. Now, the very first thing we're gonna do is go to our user profile. So CD is change directory, space, and then you're gonna do a percentage, user profile percentage. Those are wild cards that are gonna set you to the user profile directory. Go ahead and press enter. Now that should take you to a prompt that looks like this. It gives you the C drive, users, and then that should be your username that you log into Windows with. Basically your home directory is what we're after here. Next, you're gonna go ahead and use get to clone and download the repository for Automatic 11.11. You're gonna do that with this command. Don't worry, that's copied down in the description as well. Go ahead and click that, and you're gonna see it running through and downloading all the data. It only takes a few seconds. All right, now what that's done is it's created a brand new directory and it's downloaded or cloned all the files for Automatic 11.11. We can get into that directory by going CD, change directory, stable diffusion web UI. Go ahead and click enter. That's gonna take you into that directory in your system. Now what you're gonna be able to do from here is actually open up File Explorer and go to that directory. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to fire up your File Explorer just like this, we're gonna to go to our C drive. You're gonna scroll down to users, find your user in the list, and then we're gonna scroll down to Stable Diffusion Web UI. Now in here, this is all the Stable Diffusion models that we cloned and that we downloaded earlier. And what you can do is you can go into the models directory, click on Stable Diffusion. This is where we're gonna put our checkpoint files. This is the actual stable diffusion libraries or models that we're gonna to use to train our images later. Now, if you already followed my last tutorial, in your Google Drive, you should have a your name, so in my case, belove.checkpoint file. 
that model, or it might also be model.checkpoint, it depends on what you named it, that's the checkpoint file you're going to use to train your stable diffusion on your own images. So if you've got that file, drop it in this folder. Otherwise, what you can also do, which is going to allow you more flexibility in the types of images that you create, you're going to go to stablediffusionart.com. And if you scroll down just a little bit here, you can see there's a download link. This is Stable Diffusion 1.5. And you can click download. This is going to start downloading that checkpoint file. You can also go directly to Hugging Face. I'll show you how to do that. Huggingface.com. And we use this in our other tutorial. And you can come here and you can search models. So you can go stable. Helps if I can type. Stable diffusion. And you can see there are a number of different versions here. So there's 1.4, 1 1.5, 1 2.1. You can select whatever version of Stable Diffusion you want to play around with. So in this case, we'll go with 2.1. And then you can download it right here on this page. The cool thing is you just, again, you take that checkpoint file, you drop it into that folder in your file system. That's all you have to do. Couldn't be any simpler than that. And the cool thing is we're already on the home stretch here. So if you go back after you've uploaded your checkpoint files, you can go back a couple directories to Stable Diffusion Web UI. And when you scroll down, you're gonna see a couple files here. One of them is Web UI batch file. This is a batch file that you're gonna execute. This is what's gonna start the service in the background and it's gonna allow you to actually run the Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 software. So go ahead and click on that file. This is gonna take quite a while because it's gotta download and install a whole bunch of different systems onto your computer. This is the longest part of the process. So while this is running in the background, you can go ahead and grab a cup of coffee, go do something else, read up on Stable Diffusion, or maybe even just watch my other video on how to create your own model of yourself for Stable Diffusion so that you can drag and drop it right into this. All right, that took a while, but we're finally done. What it does is it goes ahead and installs all the requirements for the web UI. You can see that it loads all the transformers and all the models. So again, those checkpoint files that we installed earlier. And then the last thing you'll notice in here is that running on local URL, and it gives you the loopback address. So 127001, that means localhost, colon 7860. This is the port and URL that this is running on. So... Do not close that window. If you close that window, it's gonna shut down the web server. You're not gonna be able to actually log into the UI. So with that running, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back over to your web browser. Now, if all of that worked and went according to plan, you should have this UI. This is automatic 11.11. This is where you're gonna actually run Stable Diffusion locally. Really cool part about this is if you go to this drop down right at the top where it says Stable Diffusion Checkpoint, that's going to give you a list of all the models that you've got loaded up. I'm going to go with Stable Diffusion 1.5. I'm going to select that. If you trained your own model using my tutorial, you can also select your model from that list as well. Now, I can do an entire series of videos on how to write prompts for this and how to generate images the entire nine yards. For now, we're just gonna test that this works. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the prompt. We're on the text to image tab and we're gonna say photo of a cat. And then we're gonna go over here and click generate. We're not gonna mess with any of the other settings just yet. We click generate. It's gonna take just a minute for this to come back with anything. And that's gonna depend on a few things, how fast and powerful your computer is and mostly how powerful your GPU is. Again, I'm running an RTX 3090, so it's a fairly powerful GPU. But this still takes a few seconds to render something. And there we have it. That is our very first Stable Diffusion photo. You can click on this and you can pull up a larger version. If you want to inspect it, check it out, see how it looks. Now, there are a few things we can do right off the bat that are going to help you out here. So the few things that we're going to check out are batch size. This is the number of images that it's going to generate. So we can go with, let's say, four. Batch count, this is the number of batches it's going to generate. So if you have it set to one, it's gonna generate four images. If you have it set to four, it's gonna do four batches of four images or 16 images in total. And the reason you would wanna use batches is because it's gonna use a different seed for each of those batches. So you're gonna get vastly different results from each set. So it's a nice way to get a little bit of variety 
from your your training data. You can set a sampling method. Now these, there's a whole bunch of detail we can go into these. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do so. I typically use DPM++ 2M Keras. That seems to be good for most of the stuff I do. Sampling steps, this is the number of sort of inference steps that it goes through or kind of iterations that it goes through on the image to kind of clear it up. The higher the number of steps, typically the higher quality, but there is a limit to that. I find that you can get pretty good data out of, let's say anywhere between 20 and 65. That's kind of the sweet spot. You can click generate. That's gonna generate four new images. There we go. It always gives you a tile of all of the images together. You can click on the individual images from there and you can check them all out. That one's pretty cool. And then you can click save. So you can either save the images one at a time. You can send it to image to image. This is how you can kind of further refine it. Not gonna go into that right now. Now the cool thing is as you go through all this process and you go through the trouble of writing a prompt and a negative prompt and getting the style images that you want, you can go in here and you can actually save your style. I've saved a couple that I really like here. And so we'll go to thumbnail one and then you just click apply selected style. And you'll notice that it comes up with the training prompt, so the actual uh, text prompt that you use for this and then all of the negative keywords that I have associated with it as well. So based on that, let's go ahead and click generate and we'll see what this comes back with. Now this is using my own model that's trained on images of myself. You can see right up here in the prompt, I have a photo of B love person. That's the prompt that I used to generate my model earlier. And you can see these are kind of starting to shape up in a really cool illustrative style. So let's pull some of these up. Uh, these are pretty cool, actually. See, it's kind of limitless what you can do with this. Now, each of you is probably going to want a specific style, maybe something photorealistic, maybe something in kind of an illustrative or anime style, like some of this stuff. Let me know in the comments below what you're looking for, and I'll do some tutorials on how to write prompts for this. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for this so that the YouTube algorithm knows that I'm doing a good job, and you can come back and check out the updates as I post them. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next time.